Hip-hop music, also called hip-hop or rap music, is a music genre developed in the United States by inner-city African Americans and Latino Americans in the Bronx borough of New York City in the 1970s. It consists of a stylized rhythmic music that commonly accompanies rapping, a rhythmic and rhyming speech that is chanted. It developed as part of hip-hop culture, a subculture defined by four key stylistic elements, making, rapping, DJing, scratching with turntables, break dancing, and graffiti writing. Other elements include sampling beats or bass lines from records or synthesized beats and sounds, and rhythmic beatboxing. While often used to refer solely to rapping, hip-hop more properly denotes the practice of the entire subculture. The term hip-hop music is sometimes used synonymously with the term rap music, though rapping is not a required component of hip-hop music. The genre may also incorporate other elements of hip-hop culture, including DJing, turntablism, scratching, beatboxing, and instrumental tracks. Topic overview Hip-hop as both a musical genre and a culture was formed during the 1970s when block parties became increasingly popular in New York City, particularly among African-American youth residing in the Bronx. However hip-hop music did not get officially recorded for the radio or television to play until 1979, largely due to poverty during hip-hop's birth and lack of acceptance outside ghetto neighborhoods. At block parties DJs played percussive breaks of popular songs using two turntables and a DJ mixer to be able to play breaks from two copies of the same record, alternating from one to the other and extending the break. Hip-hop's early evolution occurred as sampling technology and drum machines became widely available and affordable. Turntablist techniques such as scratching and beat matching developed along with the breaks and Jamaican toasting, a chanting vocal style, was used over the beats. Rapping developed as a vocal style in which the artist speaks or chants along rhythmically with an instrumental or synthesized beat. Notable artists at this time include DJ Cool Herc, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Fab Five Freddy, Marley Marl, Africa Bambata, Cool Mo D, Curtis Blow, Doug E. Fresh, Houdini, Warp 9, The Fat Boys, and Spoonie G. The Sugarhill Gang's 1979 song, Rapper's Delight, is widely regarded to be the first hip-hop record to gain widespread popularity in the mainstream. The 1980s marked the diversification of hip-hop as the genre developed more complex styles. Prior to the 1980s, hip-hop music was largely confined within the United States. However, during the 1980s, it began to spread to music scenes in dozens of countries, many of which mixed hip-hop with local styles to create new subgenres. New school hip-hop was the second wave of hip-hop music, originating in 1983-84 with the early records of Run DMC and LL Cool J. The Golden Age hip-hop period was an innovative period between the mid-1980s and the early 1990s. Notable artists from this era include The Juice Crew, Public Enemy, Eric B. and Rakim, Boogie Down Productions and KRS-One, EPMD, Slick Rick, Beastie Boys, Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane, Ultramagnetic MCs, De La Soul, and A Tribe Called Quest. Gangsta rap is a subgenre of hip-hop that often focuses on the violent lifestyles and impoverished conditions of inner-city African-American youth. Schoolie D, N.W.A., Ice-T, Ice Cube, and the Ghetto Boys are key founding artists, known for mixing the political and social commentary of political rap with the criminal elements and crime stories found in gangster rap. In the West Coast hip-hop style, G-Funk dominated mainstream hip-hop for several years during the 1990s with artists such as Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. East Coast hip-hop in the early to mid-1990s was dominated by the Afrocentric jazz rap and alternative hip-hop of the Native Tongues Posse as well as the hardcore rap of artists such as Mob Deep, Wu-Tang Clan, and Onyx. East Coast hip-hop also had gangsta rap musicians such as Cool G Rap and the Notorious B.I.G. In the 1990s, hip-hop began to diversify with other regional styles emerging, such as Southern rap and Atlanta hip-hop. At the same time, hip-hop continued to be assimilated into other genres of popular music, examples being Neo Soul e.g., Lauryn Hill, Erica Badu, Jill Scott and New Metal e.g., Korn, Limp Bizkit. Hip-hop became a best-selling genre in the mid-1990s and the top-selling music genre by 1999. 
The popularity of hip-hop music continued through the 2000s, with hip-hop influences also increasingly finding their way into mainstream pop. The United States also saw the success of regional styles such as Krunk e.g. Lil Jon and the East Side Boys, the Ying Yang Twins, a southern genre that emphasized the beats and music more than the lyrics. Starting in 2005, sales of hip-hop music in the United States began to severely wane. During the mid-2000s, alternative hip-hop secured a place in the mainstream, due in part to the crossover success of artists such as OutKast and Kanye West. During the late 2000s and early 2010s, rappers such as Lil Wayne, Soulja Boy, and B.O.B. were the most popular rappers. During the 2010s, rappers such as Drake, Nicki Minaj, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar all have been extremely popular. Trap, a subgenre of hip-hop, also has been popular during the 2010s with hip-hop artists and hip-hop music groups such as Migos, Travis Scott, and Kodak Black. Topic. Origin of the term The creation of the term hip-hop is often credited to Keith Cowboy, rapper with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. However, Lovebug Starsky, Keith Cowboy, and DJ Hollywood used the term when the music was still known as disco rap. It is believed that Cowboy created the term while teasing a friend who had just joined the U.S. Army, by scat singing the words, hip, hop, hip, hop, in a way that mimicked the rhythmic cadence of soldiers marching. Cowboy later worked the hip hop cadence into a part of his stage performance, which was quickly used by other artists such as the Sugarhill Gang in. Rapper's Delight. Universal Zulu Nation founder Africa Bambata is credited with first using the term to describe the subculture in which the music belonged, although it is also suggested that it was a derogatory term to describe the type of music. The first use of the term in print was in The Village Voice, by Stephen Hager, later author of a 1984 history of hip-hop. Precursors Musical elements anticipating hip-hop music have been identified in blues, jazz and rhythm and blues recordings from the 1950s and earlier, including several records by Bo Diddley. Muhammad Ali's 1963 spoken word album I Am The Greatest is regarded by some writers as an early example of hip-hop. Pigmeat Markham's 1968 single, Here Comes The Judge is one of several songs said to be the earliest hip-hop record. The Last Poets, recognized as a proto-rap group, began performing in New York City in 1968 and released their debut album in 1970. 1970s Origins Hip-hop as music and culture formed during the 1970s in New York City from the multicultural exchange between African-American youth from the United States and young immigrants and children of immigrants from countries in the Caribbean. Hip-hop music in its infancy has been described as an outlet and a voice for the disenfranchised youth of marginalized backgrounds and low-income areas, as the hip-hop culture reflected the social, economic and political realities of their lives. Many of the people who helped establish hip-hop culture, including DJ Cool Herc, DJ Disco Wiz, Grandmaster Flash, and Africa Bambata were of Latin American or Caribbean origin. It is hard to pinpoint the exact musical influences that most affected the sound and culture of early hip-hop because of the multicultural nature of New York City. Hip-hop's early pioneers were influenced by a mix of music from their cultures and the cultures they were exposed to as a result of the diversity of U.S. cities. New York City experienced a heavy Jamaican hip-hop influence during the 1990s. This influence was brought on by cultural shifts particularly because of the heightened immigration of Jamaicans to New York City and the American-born Jamaican youth who were coming of age during the 1990s. In the 1970s, block parties were increasingly popular in New York City, particularly among African American, Caribbean and Latino youth residing in the Bronx. Block parties incorporated DJs, who played popular genres of music, especially funk and soul music. 
Due to the positive reception, DJs began isolating the percussive breaks of popular songs. This technique was common in Jamaican dub music, and was largely introduced into New York by immigrants from the Caribbean, including DJ Cool Herc, one of the pioneers of hip-hop. Because the percussive breaks in funk, soul and disco records were generally short, Herc and other DJs began using two turntables to extend the breaks. Herc created the blueprint for hip-hop music and culture by building upon the Jamaican tradition of impromptu toasting, a spoken type of boastful poetry and speech over music. On August 11, 1973, DJ Cool Herc was the DJ at his sister's back-to-school party. He extended the beat of a record by using two record players, isolating the percussion breaks by using a mixer to switch between the two records. Herc's experiments with making music with record players became what we now know as breaking or scratching. A second key musical element in hip-hop music is emceeing, also called micking or rapping. Emceeing is the rhythmic spoken delivery of rhymes and wordplay, delivered at first without accompaniment and later done over a beat. This spoken style was influenced by the African-American style of capping, a performance where men tried to outdo each other in originality of their language and tried to gain the favor of the listeners. The basic elements of hip-hop, boasting raps, rival, posses, groups, uptown, throw downs and political and social commentary were all long present in African-American music. Micking and rapping performers moved back and forth between the predominance of toasting songs packed with a mix of boasting, slackness, and sexual innuendo and a more topical, political, socially conscious style. The role of the MC originally was as a master of ceremonies for a DJ dance event. The MC would introduce the DJ and try to pump up the audience. The MC spoke between the DJ's songs, urging everyone to get up and dance. MCs would also tell jokes and use their energetic language and enthusiasm to rev up the crowd. Eventually, this introducing role developed into longer sessions of spoken, rhythmic wordplay, and rhyming, which became rapping. By 1979 hip-hop music had become a mainstream genre. It spread across the world in the 1990s with controversial gangsta. Rap. Herc also developed upon breakbeat DJing, where the breaks of funk songs, the part most suited to dance, usually percussion-based, were isolated and repeated for the purpose of all-night dance parties. This form of music playback, using hard funk and rock, formed the basis of hip-hop music. Campbell's announcements and exhortations to dancers would lead to the syncopated, rhymed spoken accompaniment now known as rapping. He dubbed his dancers break boys and break girls or simply be boys and be girls according to herc breaking was also street slang for getting excited and acting energetically djs such as grand wizard theodore grandmaster flash and jazzy j refined and developed the use of breakbeats including cutting and scratching the approach used by Herc was soon widely copied, and by the late 1970s, DJs were releasing 12-inch records where they would rap to the beat. Popular tunes included Curtis Blow's The Breaks and the Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight. Herc and other DJs would connect their equipment to power lines and perform at venues such as public basketball courts and at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, Bronx, New York, now officially a historic building. The equipment consisted of numerous speakers, turntables, and one or more microphones. By using this technique, DJs could create a variety of music, but according to Rap Attack by David Toop, at its worst the technique could turn the night into one endless and inevitably boring song. KC the Prince of Soul, a rapper lyricist with Pete DJ Jones, is often credited with being the first rap lyricist to call himself an MC. Street gangs were prevalent in the poverty of the South Bronx, and much of the graffiti, rapping, and b-boying at these parties were all artistic variations on the competition and one-upmanship of street gangs. Sensing that gang members' often violent urges could be turned into creative ones, Africa Bambata founded the Zulu Nation, a loose confederation of street dance crews, graffiti artists, and rap musicians. By the late 1970s, the culture had gained media attention, with Billboard magazine printing an article titled B Beats Bombarding Bronx, 
commenting on the local phenomenon and mentioning influential figures such as Cool Herc. The New York City blackout of 1977 saw widespread looting, arson, and other citywide disorders especially in the Bronx where a number of looters stole DJ equipment from electronics stores. As a result, the hip-hop genre, barely known outside of the Bronx at the time, grew at an astounding rate from 1977 onward. DJ Cool Herc's house parties gained popularity and later moved to outdoor venues in order to accommodate more people. Hosted in parks, these outdoor parties became a means of expression and an outlet for teenagers, where, instead of getting into trouble on the streets, teens now had a place to expend their pent-up energy. Tony Tone, a member of the Cold Crush Brothers, stated that, hip-hop saved a lot of lives. For inner-city youth, participating in hip-hop culture became a way of dealing with the hardships of life as minorities within America, and an outlet to deal with the risk of violence and the rise of gang culture. MC Kid Lucky mentions that, people used to break dance against each other instead of fighting. Inspired by DJ Cool Herc, Africa Bambata created a street organization called Universal Zulu Nation, centered around hip hop, as a means to draw teenagers out of gang life, drugs, and violence. The lyrical content of many early rap groups focused on social issues, most notably in the seminal track The Message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, which discussed the realities of life in the housing projects. Young black Americans coming out of the civil rights movement have used hip-hop culture in the 1980s and 1990s to show the limitations of the hip-hop movement. Hip-hop gave young African Americans a voice to let their issues be heard, like rock and roll. Hip-hop is vigorously opposed by conservatives because it romanticizes violence, law-breaking, and gangs. It also gave people a chance for financial gain by reducing the rest of the world to consumers of its social concerns. In late 1979, Debbie Harry of Blondie took Nile Rodgers of Chic to such an event, as the main backing track used was the break from Chic's Good Times. The new style influenced Harry, and Blondie's later hit single from 1981, Rapture, became the first single containing hip hop elements to hit number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. The song itself is usually considered new wave and fuses heavy pop music elements, but there is an extended rap by Harry near the end. Hip hop's early evolution into a form distinct from R&B also, not coincidentally, occurred around the time that sampling technology and drum machines became widely available to the general public at a cost that was affordable to the average consumer, not just professional studios. Drum machines and samplers were combined in machines that came to be known as MPCs or music production centers, early examples of which would include the Lin 9000. The first sampler that was broadly adopted to create this new kind of music was the Mellotron used in combination with the TR-808 drum machine. Mellotrons and Linz were succeeded by the Akai. In the late 1980s, turntablist techniques, such as rhythmic scratching, pushing a record back and forth while the needle is in the groove to create new sounds and sound effects, an approach attributed to Grand Wizard Theodore, beat mixing and or beat matching, and beat juggling, eventually developed along with the percussion breaks, creating a musical accompaniment or bass that could be wrapped over in a manner similar to signifying. As well, the art of Jamaican toasting, a style of talking or chanting into a microphone, often in a boastful style, while beats play over a sound system, was an important influence on the development of hip-hop music. Toasting is another influence found in Jamaican dub music. Boxer Muhammad Ali, as an influential African-American celebrity, was widely covered in the media. Ali influenced several elements of hip-hop music. Both in the boxing ring and in media interviews, Ali became known in the 1960s for being rhyming trickster in the 1960s. Ali used a funky delivery for his comments, which included boasts, comical trash talk, and the endless quotable e lines. According to Rolling Stone, his freestyle skills, a reference to a type of vocal improvisation in which lyrics are recited with no particular subject or structure, and his rhymes, flow, and braggadocio would one day become typical of old school MCs like Run DMC and LL Cool J, the latter citing Ali as an influence. Hip hop music in its infancy has been described as an outlet and a voice for the disenfranchised youth of low income and marginalized economic areas, as the hip hop culture reflected the social, economic, and political realities of their lives. 
Topic introduction of rapping Rapping, also referred to as making or emceeing, is a vocal style in which the artist speaks lyrically and rhythmically, in rhyme and verse, generally to an instrumental or synthesized beat. Beats, almost always in four-quarters time signature, can be created by sampling and or sequencing portions of other songs by a producer. They also incorporate synthesizers, drum machines, and live bands. Rappers may write, memorize, or improvise their lyrics and perform their works a cappella or to a beat. Hip-hop music predates the introduction of rapping into hip-hop culture, and rap vocals are absent from many hip-hop tracks, such as Hip-Hop, Bebop, Don't Stop, by Man Parish, Chinese Arithmetic by Eric B. and Rakim, All Nafiish, The Soul, and We're Rocking the Planet by Hashim, and Destination Earth by Nucleus. However, the majority of the genre has been accompanied by rap vocals, such as the sci-fi-influenced electro-hip-hop group Warp 9. Female rappers appeared on the scene in the late 1970s and early 80s, including Bronx artist MC Shaw Rock, member of the Funky 4 Plus 1, credited with being the first female MC in the sequence, a hip-hop trio signed to Sugar Hill Records, the first all-female group to release a rap record, Funk You Up. The roots of rapping are found in African-American music and ultimately African music, particularly that of the griots of West African culture. The African-American traditions of signifying, the dozens, and jazz poetry all influence hip-hop music, as well as the call-and-response patterns of African and African-American religious ceremonies. Early popular radio disc jockeys of the Black Appeal radio period broke into broadcast announcing by using these techniques under the jive talk of the post-World War II swing era in the late 40s and the 50s. DJ Nat D was the MC at one of the most pitiless places for any aspiring musician trying to break into show business, Amateur Night at the Palace Theater on Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. There he was master of ceremonies from 1935 until 1947 along with his sideman, DJ Rufus Thomas. It was there he perfected the dozens, signifying and the personality jock jive patter that would become his shtick when he became the first black radio announcer on the air south of the Mason-Dixon line. Jive popularized black appeal radio, it was the language of the black youth, the double entendres and slightly obscene wordplay was a godsend to radio, reinvigorating ratings at flagging outlets that were losing audience share and flipping to the new format of R&B with black announcers. The 10% of African Americans who heard his broadcasts found that the music he promoted on radio in 1949 was also in the jukeboxes up north in the cities. They were also finding other DJs like Chicago's Al Benson on WJJD, Austin's Dr. Hep Cat on KVET and Atlanta's Jockey Jack on Word speaking the same rhyming, cadence-laden rap style. Once the white-owned stations realized the new upstarts were grabbing their black market share and that big band and swing jazz was no longer hip, some white DJs emulated the southern mushmouth and jive talk, letting their audience think they too were African American, playing the blues and bebop. John R. Richborg had a southern drawl that listeners to Nashville's WLAC nighttime R&B programming were never informed belonged not to a black DJ, as were other white DJs at the station. Dr. Hepcat's rhymes were published in a dictionary of jive talk, The Jives of Dr. Hepcat, in 1953. Jockey Jack is the infamous Jack the Rapper of Family Affair fame, after his radio convention that was a must-attend for every rap artist in the 80s and 90s these jive-talking rappers of the 50s black appeal radio format were the source and inspiration of soul singer James Brown, and musical comedy acts such as Rudy Ray Moore, Pigmeat Markham and Blowfly that are often considered godfathers of hip-hop music. Within New York City, performances of spoken word poetry and music by artists such as The Last Poets, Gil Scott Heron and Jalal Mansur Nuruddin had a significant impact on the post-civil rights era culture of the 1960s and 1970s, and thus the social environment in which hip-hop music was created. Topic Jamaican origins of outdoor sound systems AM radio at many stations were limited by the broadcast day as special licenses were required to transmit at night. Those that had such licenses were heard far out to sea and in the Caribbean, where Jocko Henderson and Jockey Jack were American DJs that were listened to at night from broadcast transmitters that were located in Miami, Florida. 
Jocko came to have an outsized influence on Jamaican MCs during the 50s as the R&B music played on the Miami stations was different from that played on JBC which rebroadcast BBC and local music styles. In Jamaica, DJs would set up large sound systems in towns and villages out on the roadside, playing music for informal gatherings, mostly folks who wandered down from country hills looking for excitement at the end of the week. There the DJs would allow toasts by an MC, which copied the style of the American DJs listened to on AM transistor radios. It was by this method that jive talk, rapping and rhyming was transposed to the island and locally the style was transformed by Jamaican lyricism, or the locals' patois. Hip-hop as music and culture formed during the 1970s in New York City from the multicultural exchange between African-American youth from the United States and young immigrants and children of immigrants from countries in the Caribbean. What would be later described as block parties in the U.S. was a reality since the 1950s all over Jamaica, as MCs called DJs in Jamaica were talking and rapping over records at sound system parties since at least 1949. Some were influenced by the vocal style of the earliest African-American radio MCs including Jocko Henderson's Rocket Ship Show of the 1950s, which rhymed and was influenced by scat singing, which could be heard over the radio in Jamaica. The first records by Jamaican DJs, including Sir Lord Comic, The Great Wugga Wugga, 1967, came as part of the local dance hall culture, which featured specials, unique mixes or versions pressed on soft discs or acetate discs, and rappers called DJs such as King Stitt, Count Machuki, U Roy, I Roy, Big Youth and many others. Recordings of Talk Over, which is a different style from the dance hall's DJ style, were also made by Jamaican artists such as Prince Buster and Lee Scratch Perry Judge Dredd as early as 1967, somehow rooted in the Talking Blues tradition. The first full-length Jamaican DJ record was a duet on a Rastafarian topic by Kingston ghetto dwellers U. Roy and Peter Tosh named Righteous Ruler produced by Lee Scratch Perry in 1969. The first DJ hit record was Fire Corner by Coxony's downbeat sound system DJ, King Stitt that same year, 1970 saw a multitude of DJ hit records in the wake of U. Roy's early, massive hits, most famously Wake the Town and many others. As the tradition of remix which also started in Jamaica where it was called version and dub developed, established young Jamaican DJ, rappers from that period, who had already been working for sound systems for years, were suddenly recorded and had many local hit records, widely contributing to the reggae craze triggered by Bob Marley's impact in the 1970s. The main Jamaican DJs of the early 1970s were King Stitt, Samuel I, Count Machuki, Johnny Lover who versioned songs by Bob Marley and the Wailers as early as 1971, Dave Barker, Scotty, Lloyd Young, Charlie Ace and others, as well as soon-to-be reggae stars U. Roy, Dennis Al Capone, I. Roy, Prince Jasbo, Prince Far I, Big Youth and Dillinger. Dillinger scored the first international rap hit record with Cocaine in My Brain in 1976 based on the Do It Any Way You Wanna Do Rhythm by People's Choice as re-recorded by Sly and Robbie, where he even used a New York accent, consciously aiming at the new NYC rap market. The Jamaican DJ dance music was deeply rooted in the sound system tradition that made music available to poor people in a very poor country where live music was only played in clubs and hotels patronized by the middle and upper classes. By 1973 Jamaican sound system enthusiast DJ Cool Herc moved to the Bronx, taking with him Jamaica's sound system culture, and teamed up with another Jamaican, Kokla Rock, at the mic. Although other influences, most notably musical sequencer Grandmaster Flowers of Brooklyn and Grand Wizard Theodore of the Bronx contributed to the birth of hip-hop in New York, and although it was downplayed in most U.S. books about hip-hop, the main root of this sound system culture was Jamaican. The roots of rap in Jamaica are explained in detail in Bruno Bloom's book, La Rap, DJ Cool Herc and Kokla Rock provided an influence on the vocal style of rapping by delivering simple poetry verses over funk music breaks, after party goers showed little interest in their previous attempts to integrate reggae-infused toasting into musical sets. DJs and MCs would often add call and response chants, often consisting of a basic chorus, to allow the performer to gather his thoughts e.g., one, two, three, y'all, to the beat. 
Later, the MCs grew more varied in their vocal and rhythmic delivery, incorporating brief rhymes, often with a sexual or scatological theme, in an effort to differentiate themselves and to entertain the audience. These early raps incorporated the dozens, a product of African-American culture. Cool Herc and the Herculoids were the first hip-hop group to gain recognition in New York, but the number of MC teams increased over time. Often these were collaborations between former gangs, such as Africa Bambata's Universal Zulu Nation, now an international organization. Mel Mel, a rapper with the Furious Five is often credited with being the first rap lyricist to call himself an MC. During the early 1970s b-boying arose during block parties, as b-boys and b-girls got in front of the audience to dance in a distinctive and frenetic style. The style was documented for release to a worldwide audience for the first time in documentaries and movies such as Style Wars, Wild Style, and Beat Street. The term B-Boy was coined by DJ Cool Herc to describe the people who would wait for the break section of the song, getting in front of the audience to dance in a distinctive, frenetic style, although there were many early MCs that recorded solo projects of note, such as DJ Hollywood, Curtis Blow and Spoonie G. The frequency of solo artists did not increase until later with the rise of soloists with stage presence and drama, such as LL Cool J. Most early hip-hop was dominated by groups where collaboration became between the members was integral to the show. An example would be the early hip-hop group Funky 4 Plus 1, who performed in such a manner on Saturday Night Live in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> Influence of disco Hip-hop music was both influenced by disco music, as disco also emphasized the key role of the DJ in creating tracks and mixes for dancers. As well, hip-hop from the late 1970s used disco tracks as beats. At the same time, hip-hop music was also a backlash against certain subgenres of late 1970s disco. While the early disco was African-American and Italian-American created underground music developed by DJs and producers for the dance club subculture, by the late 1970s, disco airwaves were dominated by mainstream, expensively recorded music industry produced disco songs. According to Curtis Blow, the early days of hip-hop were characterized by divisions between fans and detractors of disco music. Hip-hop had largely emerged as a direct response to the watered-down, Europeanized, disco music that permeated the airwaves. The earliest hip-hop was mainly based on hard funk loops sourced from vintage funk records. However, by 1979, disco instrumental loops, tracks had become the basis of much hip-hop music. This genre was called, disco rap. Ironically, the rise of hip-hop music also played a role in the eventual decline in disco's popularity. The disco sound had a strong influence on early hip-hop music. Most of the early rap, hip-hop songs were created by isolating existing disco bass guitar bass lines and dubbing over them with MC rhymes. The Sugar Hill Gang used Sheik's Good Times as the foundation for their 1979 hit, Rapper's Delight generally considered to be the song that first popularized rap music in the United States and around the world. In 1982, Africa Bambata released the single, Planet Rock, which incorporated electronica elements from Kraftwerk's, Trans Europe Express, and Numbers, as well as YMO's, Riot in Lagos. The Planet Rock sound also spawned a hip-hop electronic dance trend, electro music, which included songs such as Planet Patrol's Play at Your Own Risk, 1982, C. Banks' One More Shot, 1982, Cerrone's Club Underworld, 1984, Shannon's Let the Music Play, 1983, Freeze's I.O.U., 1983, Midnight Stars' Freakazoid. 1983, Chaka Khan's, I Feel For You, 1984. DJ Pete Jones, Eddie Chiba, DJ Hollywood, and Love Bug Starsky were disco-influenced hip-hop DJs. Their styles differed from other hip-hop musicians who focused on rapid-fire rhymes and more complex rhythmic schemes. Africa Bambata, Paul Winley, Grandmaster Flash, and Bobby Robinson were all members of 3rd S Ladder Group. 
In Washington DC go-go emerged as a reaction against disco and eventually incorporated characteristics of hip-hop during the early 1980s. The DJ-based genre of electronic music behaved similarly, eventually evolving into underground styles known as house music in Chicago and techno in Detroit. Topic. Transition to recording The earliest hip-hop music was performed live, at house parties and block party events, and it was not recorded. Prior to 1979, recorded hip-hop music consisted mainly of PA system soundboard recordings of live party shows and early hip-hop mixtapes by DJs. Puerto Rican DJ Disco Wiz is credited as the first hip-hop DJ to create a mixed plate or mixed dub recording, when, in 1977, he combined sound bites, special effects and paused beats to technically produce a sound recording. The first hip-hop record is widely regarded to be the Sugarhill Gang's Rapper's Delight, from 1979. However, much controversy surrounds this assertion as some regard King Tim III personality jock by the Fatback Band, which was released a few weeks before Rapper's Delight. As a rap record, there are various other claimants for the title of first hip-hop record. By the early 1980s, all the major elements and techniques of the hip-hop genre were in place, and by 1982, the electronic electro sound had become the trend on the street and in dance clubs. New York City radio station WKTU featured Warp 9's Nunk. In a commercial to promote the station's signature sound of emerging hip-hop though not yet mainstream, hip-hop had begun to permeate the music scene outside of New York City. It could be found in cities as diverse as Los Angeles, Atlanta, Chicago, Washington D.C., Baltimore, Dallas, Kansas City, San Antonio, Miami, Seattle, St. Louis, New Orleans, Houston, and Toronto. Indeed, funk you up. 1979, the first hip-hop record released by a female group, and the second single released by Sugar Hill Records, was performed by The Sequence, a group from Columbia, South Carolina which featured Angie Stone. Despite the genre's growing popularity, Philadelphia was, for many years, the only city whose contributions could be compared to New York City's. Hip-hop music became popular in Philadelphia in the late 1970s. The first released record was titled Rhythm Talk, by Jocko Henderson. The New York Times had dubbed Philadelphia the graffiti capital of the world. In 1971, Philadelphia native DJ Lady B recorded To the Beat Y'all in 1979, and became the first female solo hip-hop artist to record music. Schooly D, starting in 1984 and also from Philadelphia, began creating a style that would later be known as gangster rap. 1980s The 1980s marked the diversification of hip-hop as the genre developed more complex styles. New York City became a veritable laboratory for the creation of new hip-hop sounds. Early examples of the diversification process can be heard in tracks such as Grandmaster Flash's The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the Wheels of Steel 1981, a single consisting entirely of sampled tracks as well as Africa Bambata's Planet Rock. 1982, and Warp 9's Nunk, 1982, which signified the fusion of hip-hop music with electro. In addition, Ramel Z and K. Robb's Beat Bop 1983 was a slow jam which had a dub influence with its use of reverb and echo as texture and playful sound effects. Light Years Away, by Warp 9, 1983, produced and written by Lottie Golden and Richard Schur, described as a cornerstone of early 80s beatbox Afrofuturism, by the UK paper, The Guardian, introduced social commentary from a sci-fi perspective. In the 1970s, hip-hop music typically used samples from funk and later, from disco. The mid-1980s marked a paradigm shift in the development of hip-hop, with the introduction of samples from rock music, as demonstrated in the albums King of Rock and Licensed to Ill. Hip-hop prior to this shift is characterized as old-school hip-hop. The proliferation of electro-hip-hop and hip-hop records in the early 1980s can be attributed to the new beat-making abilities that the newly available Roland TR-808 drum machine provided to beatmakers and producers. 
Hitting the market in 1980, it became the drum machine of choice because of its affordability and the unique character of its analog, synthesized drum sounds, especially its bass drum sound, which had a deep, solid sound in club PA systems. The new generation of drum machines such as the 808 and Oberheim DMX were a defining characteristic of many 1980s songs, allowing record companies to quickly produce new electro and electro hip-hop records to meet the high demand on the street. Even in the 2010s, the 808 kick drum sound is used by hip-hop producers. Over time sampling technology became more advanced. However, earlier producers such as Marley Marl used drum machines to construct their beats from small excerpts of other beats in synchronization, in his case, triggering three Korg sampling delay units through a Roland 808. Later, samplers such as the Emu SP-1200 allowed not only more memory but more flexibility for creative production. This allowed the filtration and layering different hits, and with a possibility of resequencing them into a single piece. With the emergence of a new generation of samplers such as the Akai S900 in the late 1980s, producers did not have to create complex, time-consuming tape loops. Public Enemy's first album was created with the help of large tape loops. The process of looping a break into a breakbeat now became more commonly done with a sampler, now doing the job which so far had been done manually by the DJs using turntables. In 1989, DJ Mark James, under the moniker 45 King, released The 900 Number, a breakbeat track created by synchronizing samplers and vinyl records, the lyrical content and other instrumental accompaniment of hip-hop developed as well. The early lyrical styles in the 1970, which tended to be boasts and cliched chants, were replaced with metaphorical lyrics exploring a wider range of subjects. As well, the lyrics were performed over more complex, multi-layered instrumental accompaniment. Artists such as Mel Mel, Rakim, Chuck D, KRS-One and Warp 9 revolutionized hip-hop by transforming it into a more mature art form, with sophisticated arrangements, often featuring gorgeous textures and multiple layers. The influential single, The Message. 1982 by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five is widely considered to be the pioneering force for conscious rap. Independent record labels like Tommy Boy, Prism Records and Profile Records became successful in the early 1980s, releasing records at a furious pace in response to the demand generated by local radio stations and club DJs. Early 1980s electro music and rap were catalysts that sparked the hip-hop movement, led by artists such as Cybotron, Hashem, Africa Bambata, Planet Patrol, Nucleus and Warp 9. In the New York City recording scene, artists collaborated with producer, writers such as Arthur Baker, John Roby, Lottie Golden and Richard Schur, exchanging ideas that contributed to the development of hip-hop. Some rappers eventually became mainstream pop performers. Curtis Blow's appearance in a Sprite soda pop commercial marked the first hip-hop musician to do a commercial for a major product. The 1981 songs, Rapture, by Blondie and Christmas Rapping, by the new wave band The Waitresses were among the first pop songs to utilize rap. In 1982, Africa Bambata introduced hip-hop to an international audience with Planet Rock. Prior to the 1980s, hip-hop music was largely confined within the context of the United States. However, during the 1980s, it began its spread and became a part of the music scene in dozens of countries. Greg Wilson was the first DJ to introduce electro hip-hop to UK club audiences in the early 1980s, opting for the dub or instrumental versions of Nunk by Warp 9, Extra Tease, E.T. Boogie. Hip Hop, Be Bop, Don't Stop, By Man Parish, Planet Rock and Dirty Talk, Klein Plus MBO Song. In the early part of the decade, B-Boying became the first aspect of hip hop culture to reach Japan, Australia and South Africa. In South Africa, the breakdance crew Black Noise established the practice before beginning to rap later in the decade. Musician and presenter Sydney became France's first black TV presenter with his show HIP. HOP which screened on TF1 during 1984, a first for the genre worldwide. Sydney is considered the father of French hip-hop. 
Radio Nova helped launch other French hip-hop stars including D Nasty, whose 1984 album Panem City Rappin along with compilations Repatitude 1 and 2 contributed to a general awareness of hip-hop in France. Hip-hop has always kept a very close relationship with the Latino community in New York. DJ Disco Wiz and the Rocksteady crew were among early innovators from Puerto Rico, combining English and Spanish in their lyrics. The Mean Machine recorded their first song under the label, Disco Dreams, in 1981, while Kid Frost from Los Angeles began his career in 1982. Cypress Hill was formed in 1988 in the suburb of South Gate outside Los Angeles when Senan Reyes born in Havana and his younger brother Ulpiano Sergio Mellow Man Ace moved from Cuba to South Gate with his family in 1971. They teamed up with DVX from Queens, New York, Lawrence Mugrad, DJ Muggs, and Louis Fries, Be Real, a Mexican, Cuban American native of Los Angeles. After the departure of Ace to begin his solo career, the group adopted the name of Cypress Hill, named after a street running through a neighborhood nearby in South Los Angeles. Japanese hip hop is said to have begun when Hiroshi Fujiwara returned to Japan and started playing hip hop records in the early 1980s. Japanese hip hop generally tends to be most directly influenced by old school hip hop, taking the era's catchy beats, dance culture, and overall fun and carefree nature and incorporating it into their music. Hip hop became one of the most commercially viable mainstream music genres in Japan, and the line between it and pop music is frequently blurred. Topic. New School Hip Hop The New School of Hip Hop was the second wave of hip hop music, originating in 1983-84 with the early records of Run DMC and LL Cool J as with the hip hop preceding it which subsequently became known as Old School Hip Hop, the New School came predominantly from New York City. The new school was initially characterized in form by drum machine-led minimalism, with influences from rock music, a hip-hop, metal music for the 80s a hard-edge ugly, beauty trance as desperate and stimulating as New York itself. It was notable for taunts and boasts about rapping, and socio-political commentary, both delivered in an aggressive, self-assertive style. In image as in song its artists projected a tough, cool, street b-boy attitude. These elements contrasted sharply with the funk and disco-influenced hip-hop groups, whose pre-1984 music was characterized by novelty hits, live bands, synthesizers and party rhymes. Not all artists prior to 1984 had these styles. New school artists made shorter songs that could more easily gain radio play, and they produced more cohesive LP albums than their old school counterparts. By 1986, their releases began to establish the hip-hop album as a fixture of mainstream music. Hip-hop music became commercially successful, as exemplified by the Beastie Boys' 1986 album Licensed to Ill, which was the first rap album to hit number one on the Billboard charts. Topic Golden Age Hip-Hop Hip-Hop's Golden Age or Golden Era is a name given to a period in mainstream hip-hop, produced between the mid-1980s and the early 1990s, which is characterized by its diversity, quality, innovation and influence. There were strong themes of Afrocentrism and political militancy in Golden Age hip-hop lyrics. The music was experimental and the sampling drew on eclectic sources. There was often a strong jazz influence in the music. The artists and teams most often associated with this phrase are Public Enemy, Boogie Down Productions, Eric B. and Rakim, De La Soul, A Tribe Called Quest, Gang Star, Big Daddy Kane and the Jungle Brothers. The Golden Age is noted for its innovation, a time when it seemed that every new single reinvented the genre, according to Rolling Stone. Referring to hip-hop in its golden age, Spin's editor-in-chief Sia Michel says, there were so many important, groundbreaking albums coming out right about that time, and MTV's Sway Calloway adds, the thing that made that era so great is that nothing was contrived. Everything was still being discovered and everything was still innovative and new. Writer William Jelani Cobb says what made the era they inaugurated worthy of the term golden was the sheer number of stylistic innovations that came into existence. In these golden years, a critical mass of Mike prodigies were literally creating themselves and their art form at the same time. 
The specific time period that the Golden Age covers varies. MSNBC states, the Golden Age of hip-hop music, the 80s. <laughs> Gangsta rap and West Coast hip-hop Gangsta rap is a subgenre of hip-hop that reflects the violent lifestyles of inner-city American black youths. Gangsta is a non-rhotic pronunciation of the word gangster. The genre was pioneered in the mid-1980s by rappers such as Schooly D and Ice-T, and was popularized in the later part of the 1980s by groups like N.W.A. Ice-T released, Six in the Morning, which is often regarded as the first gangsta rap song, in 1986. After the national attention and controversy that Ice-T and N.W.A. created in the late 1980s and early 1990s, gangsta rap became the most commercially lucrative subgenre of hip-hop. N.W.A. is the group most frequently associated with the founding of gangsta rap. Their lyrics were more violent, openly confrontational, and shocking than those of established rap acts, featuring incessant profanity and, controversially, use of the word, nigga. These lyrics were placed over rough, rock guitar-driven beats, contributing to the music's hard-edged feel. The first blockbuster gangsta rap album was N.W.A.'s Straight Outta Compton, released in 1988. Straight Outta Compton would establish West Coast hip-hop as a vital genre, and establish Los Angeles as a legitimate rival to hip-hop's longtime capital, New York City. Straight Outta Compton sparked the first major controversy regarding hip-hop lyrics when their song Fuck de Police, earned a letter from FBI assistant director, Milt Alluric, strongly expressing law enforcement's resentment of the song. Controversy surrounded Ice T's album Body Count, in particular over its song, Cop Killer. The song was intended to speak from the viewpoint of a criminal getting revenge on racist, brutal cops. Ice T's rock song infuriated government officials, the National Rifle Association, and various police advocacy groups. Consequently, Time Warner Music refused to release Ice-T's upcoming album Home Invasion because of the controversy surrounding Cop Killer. Ice-T suggested that the furor over the song was an overreaction, telling journalist Chuck Phillips. They've done movies about nurse killers and teacher killers and student killers. Actor Arnold Schwarzenegger blew away dozens of cops as the Terminator but I don't hear anybody complaining about that." In the same interview, Ice-T suggested to Phillips that the misunderstanding of Cop Killer and the attempts to censor it had racial overtones. The Supreme Court says it's okay for a white man to burn a cross in public. But nobody wants a black man to write a record about a cop killer. The subject matter inherent in gangster rap more generally has caused controversy. The White House administrations of both George Bush Sr. and Bill Clinton criticized the genre. The reason why rap is under attack is because it exposes all the contradictions of American culture. What started out as an underground art form has become a vehicle to expose a lot of critical issues that are not usually discussed in American politics. The problem here is that the White House and wanna BES like Bill Clinton represent a political system that never intends to deal with inner-city urban chaos," Sister Solja told The Times. Due to the influence of Ice-T and N.W.A., gangsta rap is often viewed as an originally West Coast phenomenon, despite the contributions of East Coast acts like Boogie Down Productions in shaping the genre. Topic 1990s. Topic <laughs> Mainstream Breakthrough. In 1990, Public Enemy's Fear of a Black Planet was a significant success with music critics and consumers. The album played a key role in hip hop's mainstream emergence in 1990, dubbed by Billboard editor Paul Grain as. The year that rap exploded. In a 1990 article on its commercial breakthrough, Janice C. Thompson of Time wrote that hip-hop has grown into the most exciting development in American pop music in more than a decade. Thompson noted the impact of Public Enemy's 1989 single, Fight the Power, 
rapper Tone Locke's single Wild Thing being the best-selling single of 1989, and that at the time of her article, nearly a third of the songs on the Billboard Hot 100 were hip-hop songs. In a similar 1990 article, Robert Hilburn of the Los Angeles Times put hip-hop music's commercial emergence into perspective, in 1990, also while working with the rap group Snap, Ronald B. Stinger. Savage a former member of the Zulu Nation is credited for carving the term Six Elements of the Hip-Hop Movement by being inspired by Public Enemy's recordings. The Six Elements of the Hip-Hop Movement are Consciousness Awareness, Civil Rights Awareness, Activism Awareness, Justice, Political Awareness, Community Awareness in Music. Ronald Savage is known as the son of the hip-hop movement. It was ten years ago that the Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight became the first rap single to enter the national top 20. Whoever figured then that the music would even be around in 1990, much less produce attractions that would command as much pop attention as Public Enemy and N.W.A. Rapper's Delight was a novelty record that was considered by much of the pop community simply as a lightweight offshoot of disco. And that image stuck for years. Occasional records, including Grandmaster Flash's The Message, in 1982 and run DMC's It's Like That in 1984 won critical approval, but rap, mostly, was dismissed as a passing fancy too repetitious, too one dimensional. Yet rap didn't go away, and an explosion of energy and imagination in the late 1980s leaves rap today as arguably the most vital new street oriented sound in pop since the birth of rock in the 1950s. MC Hammer hit mainstream success with the multi-platinum album Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. The record reached number one and the first single, You Can't Touch This, charted on the top ten of the Billboard Hot 100. MC Hammer became one of the most successful rappers of the early 90s and one of the first household names in the genre. The album raised rap music to a new level of popularity. It was the first hip-hop album certified diamond by the RIAA for sales of over 10 million. It remains one of the genre's all-time best-selling albums. To date, the album has sold as many as 18 million units. Released in 1990, Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice was the first hip-hop single to top the Billboard charts in the US. It also reached number one in the UK, Australia among others and has been credited for helping diversify hip-hop by introducing it to a mainstream audience. In 1992, Dr. Dre released The Chronic. As well as helping to establish West Coast gangster rap as more commercially viable than East Coast hip-hop, this album founded a style called G-Funk, which soon came to dominate West Coast hip-hop. The style was further developed and popularized by Snoop Dogg's 1993 album Doggy Style. However, hip-hop was still met with resistance from black radio, including urban contemporary radio stations. Russell Simmons said in 1990, black radio stations hated rap from the start and there's still a lot of resistance to it. Despite the lack of support from some black radio stations, hip-hop became a best-selling music genre in the mid-1990s and the top-selling music genre by 1999 with 81 million CDs sold. By the late 1990s hip-hop was artistically dominated by the Wu-Tang Clan, Diddy and the Fugees. The Beastie Boys continued their success throughout the decade crossing color lines and gaining respect from many different artists. Record labels based out of Atlanta, St. Louis, and New Orleans also gained fame for their local scenes. The Midwest rap scene was also notable, with the fast vocal styles from artists such as Bone Thugs and Harmony, Tech 9, and Twista. By the end of the decade, hip-hop was an integral part of popular music, and many American pop songs had hip-hop components. Topic. East versus West rivalry The East Coast-West Coast, Coast hip-hop rivalry was a feud from 1991 to 1997 between artists and fans of the East Coast hip-hop and West Coast hip-hop scenes in the United States, especially from 1994 to 1997. Focal points of the feud were East Coast-based rapper The Notorious B.I.G. 
and his New York-based label, Bad Boy Records and West Coast-based rapper Tupac Shakur and his Los Angeles-based label, Death Row Records, who were both fatally shot following drive-by shootings by unknown assailants in 1997 and 1996, respectively. Topic East Coast Hip Hop In the early 1990s East Coast Hip Hop was dominated by the Native Tongues Posse which was loosely composed of De La Soul with producer Prince Paul, a tribe called Quest, the Jungle Brothers, as well as their loose affiliates Third Base, Main Source, and the less successful Black Sheep and KMD. Although originally a Daisy Age conception stressing the positive aspects of life, darker material such as De La Soul's thought-provoking Millie pulled a pistol on Santa soon crept in. Artists such as Masta Ace particularly for Slaughterhouse and Brand Nubian, Public Enemy, Organized Confusion, Tragedy Gaddafi, had a more overtly militant pose, both in sound and manner. In the early 1990s, the Wu-Tang Clan's Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers revitalized the New York hip-hop scene by pioneering an East Coast hardcore rap equivalent in intensity to what was being produced on the West Coast. According to AllMusic, the production on two Mob Deep albums, The Infamous and Hell on Earth 1996, are indebted to RZA's early production with Wu-Tang Clan. The success of albums such as Nas Ilmatic and Notorious B.I.G.'s Ready to Die during 1994-95 cemented the status of the East Coast during a time of West Coast dominance. In a March 2002 issue of The Source magazine, Nas referred to 1994 as a renaissance of New York City hip-hop. The productions of RZA, particularly for Wu-Tang Clan, became influential with artists such as Mob Deep due to the combination of somewhat detached instrumental loops, highly compressed and processed drums and gangsta lyrical content. Wu-Tang solo albums such as Raekwon the Chef's Only Built Four Cuban Links, Ghostface Killa's Iron Man, and GZA's Liquid Swords are now viewed as classics along with Wu-Tang core material. The clan's base extended into further groups called Wu Affiliates. Producers such as DJ Premier primarily for Gang Star but also for other affiliated artists, such as Jeru the Damaja, Pete Rock with CL Smooth and supplying beats for many others, Buck Wild, Large Professor, Diamond D and Q-Tip supplied beats for numerous MCs at the time, regardless of location. Albums such as Nas's Illmatic, Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt and O.C.'s Word, Life are made up of beats from this pool of producers. The rivalry between the East Coast and the West Coast rappers eventually turned personal. Later in the decade the business acumen of the Bad Boy Records tested itself against Jay-Z and his Rock A Fella Records and, on the West Coast, Death Row Records. The mid to late 1990s saw a generation of rappers such as the members of DITC such as the late Big L and Big Pun. On the East Coast, although the big business end of the market dominated matters commercially the late 1990s to early 2000s saw a number of relatively successful East Coast indie labels such as Rockus Records with whom most Def and Talib Kweli garnered success and later Def Jux. The history of the two labels is intertwined, the latter having been started by LP of Company Flow in reaction to the former, and offered an outlet for more underground artists such as Mike Ladd, Aesop Rock, Mr. Leaf, RJD2, Cage and Cannibal Ox. Other acts such as the Hispanic arsonists and slam poet turned MC Saul Williams met with differing degrees of success. Topic West Coast Hip Hop After N.W.A. broke up, Dr. Dre, a former member, released The Chronic in 1992, which peaked at number one on the R&B, Hip Hop chart, number three on the pop chart and spawned a number two pop single with Nothing But A. G. Thang. The Chronic took West Coast rap in a new direction, influenced strongly by P-Funk artists, melding smooth and easy funk beats with slowly drawled lyrics. This came to be known as G-Funk and dominated mainstream hip-hop for several years through a roster of artists on Death Row Records, including Tupac Shakur, whose double-disc album All Eyes on Me was a big hit with hit songs Ambitions as a Rida and Two of America's Most Wanted, and Snoop Dogg, whose doggy style included the songs What's My Name? and Gin and Juice, both top ten hits. As the Los Angeles-based label Death Row Records built an empire around Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and the rapper-actor Tupac Shakur. It also entered into a rivalry with New York City's Bad Boy Records. 
See the article on the East Coast-West Coast hip-hop rivalry. Detached from this scene were other artists such as Freestyle Fellowship, The Farside as well as more underground artists such as The Soulsides Collective, DJ Shadow and Blackalicious amongst others. Jurassic 5, Ugly Duckling, People Under the Stairs, De Alcoholics, and earlier Souls of Mischief represented a return to hip-hop roots of sampling and well-planned rhyme schemes. Topic. Diversification of styles In the 1990s, hip-hop began to diversify with other regional styles emerging on the national scene. Southern rap became popular in the early 1990s. The first Southern rappers to gain national attention were the Ghetto Boys out of Houston, Texas. Southern rap's roots can be traced to the success of Ghetto Boys' Grip It. On that other level in 1989, the Rick Rubin produced the Ghetto Boys in 1990, and We Can't Be Stopped in 1991. The Houston area also produced other artists that pioneered the early Southern rap sound such as UGK and the solo career of Scarface. Atlanta hip-hop artists were key in further expanding rap music and bringing Southern hip-hop into the mainstream. Releases such as Arrested Development's Three Years, Five Months and Two Days in the Life of In 1992, Goody Mob's Soul Food in 1995 and Outkast's Atlians in 1996 were all critically acclaimed. Later, Master P Ghetto D built up a roster of artists the No Limit Posse based out of New Orleans. Master P incorporated G-Funk and Miami bass influences, and distinctive regional sounds from St. Louis, Chicago, Washington D.C., Detroit and others began to gain popularity. In the 1990s, elements of hip-hop continued to be assimilated into other genres of popular music. Neo-soul, for example, combined hip-hop and soul music. In the 1980s and 1990s, rap rock, rapcore and rap metal, fusions of hip-hop and rock, hardcore punk and heavy metal became popular among mainstream audiences. Rage Against the Machine and new metal band Limp Bizkit were among the most well-known bands in these fields. In Hawaii, bands such as Sudden Rush combined hip-hop elements with the local language and political issues to form a style called Namili Paleoleo, Diggable Planet's 1993 release Reachin' A New Refutation of Time and Space was an influential jazz rap record sampling the likes of Don Cherry, Sonny Rollins, Art Blakey, Herbie Mann, Herbie Hancock, Grant Green, and Rasan Roland Kirk. It spawned the hit single, Rebirth of Slick, Cool Like Dat which reached number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100 although white rappers like the Beastie Boys, House of Pain and Third Base had had some popular success or critical acceptance from the hip-hop community, Eminem's success, beginning in 1999 with the platinum The Slim Shady LP, surprised many. Topic. 2000s The popularity of hip-hop music continued through the 2000s. Dr. Dre remained an important figure, and in the year 2000, he produced the Marshall Mathers LP by Eminem. Dre also produced 50 Cent's 2003 album Get Rich or Die Tryin', which debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 charts. Hip-hop influences also found their way increasingly into mainstream pop during this period, mainly during the mid-2000s, as the Los Angeles style of the 1990s lost power. Nelly's debut LP, Country Grammar, sold over 9 million copies. In the 2000s, crunk music, a derivative of southern hip-hop, gained considerable popularity via Lil Jon and the Ying Yang twins. Jay-Z represented the cultural triumph of hip-hop. As his career progressed, he went from performing artist to entrepreneur, label president, head of a clothing line, club owner, and market consultant, along the way breaking Elvis Presley's record for most number one albums on the Billboard magazine charts by a solo artist. Alternative hip-hop, which was introduced in the 1980s and then declined, resurged in the early 2000s with a rejuvenated interest in indie music by the general public. In the 2000s alternative hip-hop reattained its place within the mainstream, due in part to the declining commercial viability of gangsta rap as well as the crossover success of artists such as Outkast and Kanye West. 
The alternative hip hop movement expanded beyond the U.S. to include the Somali Canadian poet Kanon, Japanese rapper Shing O2, and British artist Mia. Alternative hip hop acts have attained much critical acclaim, but receive relatively little exposure through radio and other media outlets. In the mid to late 2000s decade, alternative hip hop artists such as The Roots, Dilated Peoples, Gnarls Barkley, and Most Def achieved significant recognition. Gnarls Barkley's album Saint Elsewhere, which contained a fusion of funk, neo soul, and hip hop, debuted at number 20 on the Billboard 200 charts. In addition, Aesop Rock's 2007 album None Shall Pass was well received, and reached number 50 on the Billboard charts. Topic. Krunk and snap music Krunk is a regional hip-hop genre that originated in Tennessee in the southern United States in the 1990s, influenced by Miami bass. One of the pioneers of Krunk, Lil Jon, said that it was a fusion of hip-hop, electro, and electronic dance music. The style was pioneered and commercialized by artists from Memphis, Tennessee and Atlanta, Georgia. Looped, stripped-down drum machine rhythms are usually used. The Roland TR-808 and 909 are among the most popular. The drum machine loops are usually accompanied by simple, repeated synthesizer melodies and heavy bass. Stabs. The tempo of the music is somewhat slower than hip-hop, around the speed of reggaeton. The focal point of crunk is more often the beats and instrumental music rather than the lyrics. Crunk rappers, however, often shout and scream their lyrics, creating an aggressive, almost heavy, style of hip-hop. While other subgenres of hip-hop address socio-political or personal concerns, crunk is almost exclusively party music, favoring call and response hip-hop slogans in lieu of more substantive approaches. Snap music is a subgenre of crunk that emerged from Atlanta, Georgia in the late 1990s. The genre gained mainstream popularity and in mid-2005, artists from other southern states such as Tennessee began to emerge performing in this style. Tracks commonly consist of a Roland TR-808 bass drum, hi-hat, bass, finger snapping, a main groove and a vocal track. Hit snap songs include Lean With It, Rock With It by Dem Franchise Boys Laffy Taffy by D4L it's Goin' Down, by Young Jock and Crank That Soldier Boy, by Soldier Boy Tell Em. Topic. Glitch Hop and Wonky Music Glitch Hop and Wonky Music evolved following the rise of Trip Hop, Dubstep and Intelligent Dance Music IDM. Both glitch hop and wonky music frequently reflect the experimental nature of IDM and the heavy bass featured in dubstep songs. While trip hop has been described as being a distinct British upper middle class take on hip hop, glitch hop and wonky music have much more stylistic diversity. Both genres are melting pots of influence. Glitch hop contains echoes of 1980s pop music, Indian ragas, eclectic jazz and West Coast rap. Los Angeles, London, Glasgow and a number of other cities have become hot spots for these scenes, and underground scenes have developed across the world in smaller communities. Both genres often pay homage to older and more well-established electronic music artists such as Radiohead, Affix Twin and Boards of Canada as well as independent hip-hop producers like Jay Dilla and Madlib. Glitch hop is a fusion genre of hip-hop and glitch music that originated in the early to mid-2000s in the United States and Europe. Musically, it is based on irregular, chaotic breakbeats, glitchy basslines and other typical sound effects used in glitch music, like skips. Glitch hop artists include Prefuse 73, Debray and Flying Lotus. Wonky is a subgenre of hip-hop that originated around 2008, but most notably in the United States and United Kingdom, and among international artists of the Hyperdub music label, under the influence of glitch hop and dubstep. Wonky music is of the same glitchy style as glitch hop, but it was specifically noted for its melodies, rich with mid-range unstable synths. Scotland has become one of the most prominent wonky scenes, with artists like Hudson Mohawk and Rusty. 
Glitch hop and wonky are popular among a relatively smaller audience interested in alternative hip hop and electronic music, especially dubstep. Neither glitch hop nor wonky have achieved mainstream popularity. However, artists like Flying Lotus, The Glitch Mob, and Hudson Mohawk have seen success in other avenues. Flying Lotus's music has earned multiple positive reviews on the independent music review site Pitchfork.com as well as a prominent yet uncredited spot during Adult Swim commercial breaks. Hudson Mohawk is one of few glitch hop artists to play at major music festivals such as Sasquatch. Music Festival Topic. Decline in sales Starting in 2005, sales of hip-hop music in the United States began to severely wane, leading Time magazine to question if mainstream hip-hop was dying. Billboard magazine found that, since 2000, rap sales dropped 44%, and declined to 10% of all music sales, which, while still a commanding figure when compared to other genres, is a significant drop from the 13% of all music sales where rap music regularly placed. According to Cortland Malloy of the Washington Post, for the first time on five years, no rap albums were among the top ten sellers in 2006. NPR culture critic Elizabeth Blair noted that, "...some industry experts say young people are fed up with the violence, degrading imagery and lyrics." However, the 2005 report Generation M, Media in the Lives of 8-18-Year-Olds found that hip-hop music is by far the most popular music genre for children and teenagers with 65% of 8-18-Year-Olds listening to it on a daily basis. Other journalists say the music is just as popular as it ever was, but that fans have found other means to consume the music, such as illegally downloading music through P2P networks, instead of purchasing albums and singles from legitimate stores. For example, Flo Rida is known for his low album sales regardless of his singles being mainstream and having digital success. His second album ROOTS sold only 200,000 plus total units in the US, which could not line up to the sales of the album's lead single, Right Round. This also happened to him in 2008. Some put the blame on the lack of strong lyrical content that hip-hop once had. Another example is Soulja Boy Tell M's 2007 debut album SoulgaBoyTellEm.com was met with negative reviews. Lack of sampling, a key element of early hip-hop, has also been noted for the decrease in quality of modern albums. For example, there are only four samples used in 2008's Paper Trail by T.I., while there are 35 samples in 1998's Moment of Truth by Gang Star. The decrease in sampling is in part due to it being too expensive for producers. In Byron Hurt's documentary Hip Hop, Beyond Beats and Rhymes, he claims that hip hop had changed from clever rhymes and dance beats to advocating personal, social and criminal corruption. Despite the fall in record sales throughout the music industry, hip hop has remained a popular genre, with hip hop artists still regularly topping the Billboard 200 charts. In the first half of 2009 alone artists such as Eminem, Rick Ross, The Black Eyed Peas, and Fabulous all had albums that reached the number one position on the Billboard 200 charts. Eminem's album Relapse was one of the fastest selling albums of 2009. <laughs> Topic. Musical theater Hip-hop music has influenced musical theater. Rap has used popular musicals such as Rent and Dreamgirls while more notable for funk than hip-hop. The Broadway musical Bring In Da Noise, Bring In Da Funk fuses tap dance and hip-hop dance styles, and includes rap. Hip-hop music was used in off-Broadway shows in the 1990s and early 2000s, with the musical So. What Happens Now? and Jam on the Groove. In the Heights used hip-hop music, rapping and hip-hop dancing. With music and lyrics by Lin-Manuel Miranda and book by Chiara Alegria Hughes, it was performed off-Broadway in 2007. The 2008 Broadway production fused salsa and hip-hop styles, and included rap. Miranda brought hip-hop to Richard Rogers Theatre a second time in 2015 with his production Hamilton. The show had box office success. Hamilton and In the Heights included rap and the cast recording of Hamilton made a number one album on the Billboard rap charts. 
The success of Hamilton shows that hip-hop can have a key role in musical theater. Topic innovation and revitalization During the mid-2000s, alternative hip-hop secured a place in the mainstream, due in part to the crossover success of artists such as OutKast, Kanye West, and Gnarls Barkley. Not only did OutKast's speakerbox, The Love Below receive high acclaim from music critics, manage to appeal to listeners of all ages, and span numerous musical genres, including rap, rock, R&B, punk, jazz, indie, country, pop, electronica and gospel, but it also spawned two number one hit singles and has been certified diamond by selling 11 times platinum by the RIAA for shipping more than 11 million units, becoming one of the best-selling hip-hop albums of all time as well as winning a Grammy Award for Album of the Year at the 46th Annual Grammy Awards being only the second rap album to do so. Industry observers view the sales race between Kanye West's graduation and 50 Cent's Curtis as a turning point for hip-hop. West emerged the victor, selling nearly a million copies in the first week alone, proving that innovative rap music could be just as commercially viable as gangster rap, if not more so. Although he designed it as a melancholic pop rather than rap, Kanye's following 808s and Heartbreak would have a significant effect on hip-hop music. While his decision to sing about love, loneliness, and heartache for the entirety of the album was at first heavily criticized by music audiences and the album predicted to be a flop, its subsequent critical acclaim and commercial success encouraged other mainstream rappers to take greater creative risks with their music. During the release of The Blueprint 3, New York rap mogul Jay-Z revealed that next studio album would be an experimental effort, stating, It's not gonna be a number one album. That's where I'm at right now. I wanna make the most experimental album I ever made. Jay-Z elaborated that like Kanye, he was unsatisfied with contemporary hip-hop, was being inspired by indie rockers like Grizzly Bear and asserted his belief that the indie rock movement would play an important role in the continued evolution of hip-hop. The alternative hip-hop movement is not limited only to the United States, as rappers such as Somali Canadian poet Kanon, Japanese rapper Shing O2, and Sri Lankan British artist MIA have achieved considerable worldwide recognition. In 2009, Time magazine placed MIA in the Time 100 list of world's most influential people for having global influence across many genres. Global themed movements have also sprung out of the international hip hop scene with microgenres like Islamic eco rap addressing issues of worldwide importance through traditionally disenfranchised voices. Today, due in part to the increasing use of music distribution through the internet, many alternative rap artists find acceptance by far-reaching audiences. Several artists, such as Kid Cudi and Drake, have managed to attain chart-topping hit songs, Day and Night and Best I Ever Had, respectively, by releasing their music on free online mixtapes without the help of a major record label. New artists such as Whale, J. Cole, Lupe Fiasco, The Cool Kids, J. Electronica, and B.O. B., some of whom mention being directly influenced by their 90s alt-rap predecessors, in addition to the southern rap sound, while their music has been noted by critics as expressing eclectic sounds, life experiences, and emotions rarely seen in mainstream hip-hop. 2010s On July 17, 2017, Forbes reported that hip-hop, R&B which Nielsen Soundscan classifies as being the same genre has recently usurped rock as the most consumed musical genre, becoming the most popular genre in music for the first time in U.S. history. During the late 2010s, many Golden Age hip-hop artists announced their return to performing, including Eric B. and Rakim, Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth and A Tribe Called Quest with their latest album titled We Got It From here. Thank you for your service. Topic. Trap music A subgenre of rap originating from the late 1990s to early 2000s grew to become a mainstream sensation, frequently having songs top the Billboard hip-hop charts. It is typified by double or triple time sub-divided hi-hats, heavy kick drums from the Roland TR-808 drum machine, layered synthesizers and an overall dark, ominous or bleak atmosphere. The strong influence of the sound led to other artists within the genre to move towards the trap sound, with a notable example being Jay-Z and Kanye West on their joint song, H.A.M. 
Other artists, not within the hip-hop genre have also experimented with the trap genre such as 7-Eleven by Beyoncé and Dark Horse featuring Juicy J by Katy Perry. Major artists to arise from the genre in the 2010s are Waka Flocka Flame, Future, Chief Keef, Migos, Young Thug, Travis Scott, Kodak Black, 21 Savage, Young Lean, Lil Uzi Vert, XXXTentacion, Ski Mask the Slump God, Juice World, Trippy Red, Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, Ray Shrimmerd, Takashi 6x9INE, NBA Young Boy, Lil Baby, and Fetty Wap, among others. Trap artists to originate from the 2000s were able to recapture mainstream success with the rise of trap including 2 Chains, Gucci Mane and Juicy J, becoming more successful in the latter act of their career than when they debuted. Trap producers to reach mainstream success include Metro Boomin, London on Da Track and Mike Will Made It. Critics of the trap genre have used the term, mumble rap. To describe the heavily auto-tuned, and sometimes hard to understand, delivery of verses from a majority of the artists. Artists long standing within the genre have had their own comments regarding the rise of trap, such as Rick Rubin stating that Eminem was confused by it, and Snoop Dogg claiming that he can't differentiate between artists. Black Thought, lead rapper from The Roots, stated that the game has changed. It's different. The standards are different, the criteria that's taken into consideration in determining validity is different. We're at a point in history where lyricism almost comes last in very many regards. Topic. Age of streaming The rise of streaming platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music in the mid-2010s has greatly impacted the entire music business as a whole. Despite being a free streaming-only mixtape with no commercial release, Chance the Rapper's Coloring Book won Best Rap Album at the 2017 Grammy Awards, being the first streaming album of all time to win a Grammy Award. Kanye West has stated that his own album, Yeezus, marked the death of CDs, and thus his subsequent release, The Life of Pablo was only released digitally. The Life of Pablo was also nominated for 2017 Best Rap Album. In 2017, Drake released a free streaming-only project titled More Life, which he called a playlist. Insisting that it was neither a mixtape nor an album, the online audio distribution platform SoundCloud played a massive role in the creation of various artists' careers in the latter half of the 2010s. Mainstream acts to start on SoundCloud include Post Malone, Lil Uzi Vert, Russ, Bryson Tiller, Lil Xan, Lil Pump, Lil Peep, Lil Skies, Smoke Perp, Ski Mask the Slump God, XXXTentacion, Trippy Red, Playboy Cardi, YBN Namir, Tay K, Zilla Kami, Ugly God, Nav among others. These songs are usually closely related to trap, but have also been labeled separately as SoundCloud rap. They have been characterized as usually having moody, sad undertones, and usually feature lo-fi rough production. The genre has been met with much criticism for its low effort in lyrics and production, and the problematic nature of the artists to arise from it, such as Lil Peep's drug abuse that led to his death, the multiple assault charges to XXXTentacion, 6x9INE pleading guilty to using a child in a sexual performance, and the murder charges on Tay-K. Topic. World hip-hop music Hip-hop music has reached the cultural corridors of the globe and has been absorbed and reinvented around the world. Hip-hop music expanded beyond the U.S., often blending local styles with hip-hop. Hip-hop has globalized into many cultures worldwide, as evident through the emergence of numerous regional scenes. It has emerged globally as a movement based upon the main tenets of hip-hop culture. The music and the art continue to embrace, even celebrate, its transnational dimensions while staying true to the local cultures to which it is rooted. Hip-hop's impact differs depending on each culture. Still, the one thing virtually all hip-hop artists worldwide have in common is that they acknowledge their debt to those African-American people in New York who launched the global movement. Latinos and people from the Caribbean played an integral role in the early development of hip-hop in New York, and the style spread to almost every country in that region. 
Hip-hop first developed in the South Bronx, which had a high Latino, particularly Puerto Rican, population in the 1970s. Some famous rappers from New York City of Puerto Rican origin are the late Big Pun, Fat Joe, and Angie Martinez. With Latino rap groups like Cypress Hill on the American charts, Mexican rap rock groups, such as Control Machete, rose to prominence in their native land. In many Latin American countries, as in the U.S., hip-hop has been a tool with which marginalized people can articulate their struggle. Hip-hop grew steadily more popular in Cuba in the 1980s and 1990s through Cuba's special period that came with the fall of the Soviet Union. During this period of economic crisis, which the country's poor and black populations especially hard, hip-hop became a way for the country's Afro-descended population to embrace their blackness and articulate a demand for racial equality for black people in Cuba. The idea of blackness and black liberation was not always compatible with the goals of the Cuban government, which was still operating under the idea that a raceless society was the correct realization of the Cuban Revolution. When hip-hop emerged, the Cuban government opposed the vulgar image that rappers portrayed, but later accepted that it might be better to have hip-hop under the influence of the Ministry of Culture as an authentic expression of Cuban culture. Rappers who explicitly speak about race or racism in Cuba are still under scrutiny by the government. An annual Cuban hip-hop concert, beginning in 1995, held at Alamar in Havana helped popularize Cuban hip-hop. Famous Cuban rap groups include Crudas Cubensi and Supercronica Obsesión. Black and indigenous people in Latin America and Caribbean islands have been using hip-hop for decades to discuss race and class issues in their respective countries. Brazilian hip-hop is heavily associated with racial and economic issues in the country, where a lot of Afro-Brazilians live in economically disadvantaged communities, known in Brazil as favelas. Sao Paulo is where hip-hop began in the country, but it soon spread all over Brazil, and today, almost every big Brazilian city, including Rio de Janeiro, Salvador, Curitiba, Porto Alegre, Belo Horizonte, Recife and Brasilia, has a hip-hop scene. Some notable artists include Racione MCs, Thade, and Marcelo D2. One of Brazil's most popular rappers, MV Bill, has spent his career advocating for black youth in Rio de Janeiro. Reggaeton, a Puerto Rican style of music, has a lot of similarities with U.S. based hip hop. Both were influenced by Jamaican music, and both incorporate rapping and call and response. Dancehall music and hip from the United States are both popular music in Puerto Rico, and reggaeton is the accumulation of different musical traditions founded by Afro-descended people in the Caribbean and the United States. Some of reggaeton's most popular artists include Don Omar, Tego Calderon, and Daddy Yankee. In Venezuela, social unrest at the end of the 1980s and beginning of the 1990s coincided with the rise of gangster rap in the United States and led to the rise of that music in Venezuela as well. Venezuelan rappers in the 1990s generally modeled their music after gangster rap, embracing and attempting to redefine negative stereotypes about poor and black youth as dangerous and materialistic and incorporating socially conscious critique of Venezuela's criminalization of young, poor, Afro-descended people into their music. In Haiti, hip-hop developed in the early 1980s. Master DJI and his songs, Vacan, and Politic Pa M are mostly credited with the rise of Haitian hip-hop. What later became known as Rap Creole grew in popularity in the late 1990s with King Posse and original rap stuff. Due to cheaper recording technology and flows of equipment to Haiti, more Rap Creole groups are recording songs, even after the January 12 earthquake. Haitian hip-hop has recently become a way for artists of Haitian backgrounds in the Haiti and abroad to express their national identity and political opinions about their country of origin. Rappers have embraced the red and blue of the flag of Haiti and rapping in Haitian Creole to display their national origin. In the Dominican Republic, a recording by Santi y Sus Duendes and Lisa M became the first single of Marinrap, a fusion of hip-hop and merengue. In Europe, Africa, and Asia, hip-hop began to move from the underground to mainstream audiences. In Europe, hip-hop was the domain of both ethnic nationals and immigrants. 
British hip-hop, for example, became a genre of its own and spawned artists such as Wiley, Dizzy Rascal, The Streets and many more. Germany produced the well-known Die Fantastischen Veer as well as several Turkish performers like the controversial cartel, Kul Savas, and Azad. Similarly, France has produced a number of native-born stars, such as I Am and Supreme NTM, MC Solar, Rof, Rimmick or Booba. In the Netherlands, important 90s rappers include the Osdorp Posse, a crew from Amsterdam, Extints, from Oosterhout, and Postman. Italy found its own rappers, including Giovanotti and Articolo 31, grow nationally renowned, while the Polish scene began in earnest early in the decade with the rise of PM Cool Lee. In Romania, B.U.G. Mafia came out of Bucharest's Pantelemon neighborhood, and their brand of gangsta rap underlines the parallels between life in Romania's communist-era apartment blocks and in the housing projects of America's ghettos. One of the countries outside the U.S. where hip-hop is most popular is the United Kingdom. Grime, a genre of music derived from UK garage and drum and bass and influenced by hip-hop, emerged in the early 2000s with artists such as Dizzy Rascal becoming successful. Although it is immensely popular, many British politicians criticize the music for what they see as promoting theft and murder, similar to gangsta rap in America. These criticisms have been deemed racist by the mostly black British grime industry. Despite its controversial nature, grime has had a major effect on British fashion and pop music, with many young working-class youth emulating the clothing worn by grime stars like Dizzy Rascal and Wiley. There are many subgenres of grime, including rhythm and grime, a mix of R&B and grime, and grindy, a mix of indie rock and grime popularized by indie rock band Hadoken. In Germany and France, gangster rap has become popular among youths who like the violent and aggressive lyrics. Some German rappers openly or comically flirt with Nazism, for example, Bushido born Anis Muhammad Yusuf Ferchichi raps Salutiert, State Stram, Ich bin der Leader we a Salute, Stand to Attention, I am the leader like a and Flair had a hit with the record Neue Deutsche Welle New German Wave complete with the title written in Third Reich style Gothic print and advertised with an Adolf Hitler quote. These references also spawned great controversy in Germany. Meanwhile, in France, artists like Kerry James's Ideal J maintained a radical, anti-authoritarian attitude and released songs like Hardcore which attacked the growth of the French far right. In the Netherlands, MC Brainpower went from being an underground battle rapper to mainstream recognition in the Benelux, thus influencing numerous rap artists in the region. In Israel, rapper Subliminal reaches out to Israeli youth with political and religious-themed lyrics, usually with a Zionist message. In Asia, mainstream stars rose to prominence in the Philippines, led by Francis Magalona, Rap Asia, MC Lara and Lady Diane. In Japan, where underground rappers had previously found a limited audience, and popular teen idols brought a style called J-Rap to the top of the charts in the middle of the 1990s. Of particular importance is the influence on East Asian nations, where hip-hop music has become fused with local popular music to form different styles such as K-pop, C-pop and J-pop. Israel's hip-hop grew greatly in popularity at the end of the decade, with several stars both Palestinian Tamer Nafar and Israeli subliminal. In Portugal hip-hop has his own kind of rapping, which is more political and underground scene, they are known for Valet, Dilema and Halloween. Russian hip-hop emerged during last years of Soviet Union and cemented later, with groups like Malchishnik and Bad Balance enjoying mainstream popularity in the 1990s, while Legalize and Casta were popular in the 2000s. In former Yugoslavia hip-hop first appeared during the 1980s mostly with Serbian hip-hop with performers such as B-Boy, the Master Scratch Band, Badvazer, and others. During the late 1990s hip-hop had a boom, with Rambo Amadeus and later Beogradsky Syndicate becoming a major performer. Bosnian and Herzegovinian hip-hop is nowadays dominated by Edo Majka. In the region hip-hop is often used as a political and social message in song themes such as war, profiteering, corruption, etc. Frenki, another Bosnian rapper, is associated with Edo Majka, and has collaborated beyond Bosnian borders. In Tanzania in the early 2000s, local hip-hop artists became popular by infusing local styles of Afrobeat and Arabesque melodies, dancehall and hip-hop beats with Swahili lyrics.
Topic: Rap linguistics. In September 2014, a course in rap linguistics was offered at the University of Calgary in Calgary, Alberta, examining rap from cultures as diverse as German, French, Navajo, and even the Sami people of Northern Europe. The course has difficult content as RAP is studied using methodologies applied in linguistics, such as grammar analysis and measurement of vowel sounds using software. According to Associate Professor Darren Flynn, who is teaching this course, RAP heroes, such as Eminem or Jay-Z, are true poet laureate s of the working class, and their songs crisscross sound, emotion, grammar and multiple metaphors. See also List of hip-hop festivals List of hip-hop genres Misogyny in rap music Homophobia in hip-hop culture List of murdered hip-hop musicians Hip-hop and social injustice Notes <laughs>